If you've ever worked on an ASP.NET application, then you know that this logic or the logic that sits in the program CS, the dependency injection configuration, and the request pipeline configuration, this gets out of hand really quickly and this file can become huge and hard to handle. So in today's video, we'll see how I like to organize it in a way that's both intuitive, simple, and most importantly, this doesn't end up more complex than simply having everything in one file like some of the solutions out there. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. My name is Amichai, and in this channel I talk about software architecture, best practices, things that you want to be familiar with if you're a software engineer. This video is part 10 in a series in which we're building a REST API completely from scratch following best practices, etc. So if that sounds interesting, then make sure to smash the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos as they come out. In any case, this video can be watched standalone from the overall series. Okay, so what we're going to do is very simple. So currently this is pretty organized up until now, but as we'll be adding more and more things, then this file is going to become more and more complex, which is why what we're going to do is we're going to group similar logic together. So what we're going to do is the following. Let's go ahead and create over here a new folder and let's call this dependency injection. And over here, we'll be managing everything that has to do with dependency injection, which currently is only managing the registration. So let's say over here that we want to add the service collection extensions, which will be a static class in which we'll put the various dependency injection configurations and registrations in a well-organized and dedicated place. So let's say over here, service collection extensions, and let's add here our very first extension method, which is going to be I service collection, and let's call this simply add services, and this is going to be an extension method on the service collection. Let's already return over here the services, so we don't have any reds quickly lines, and here we have what each one of our categories will look like. So over here, we'll be adding all the various services in our system. So we can take both of these from here and move them to this dedicated method. And now we're not accessing it via the builder, but we're accessing the services directly. So we can go ahead and simply say services dot add scoped. And now all we need to do is go over here and say add services. And this is coming from our extension methods file in which we have the services. Now, as this grows, then we'll have here various other methods like add persistence, add swagger, et cetera, et cetera. And it's very simple to go to the program CS and see where things are located simply by choosing the correct extension method and looking at the underlying implementation. Now, real quick, before we continue, I want to remind you that if you want to join our amazing, amazing Discord community, then you can do it for the price of a cup of coffee. Instead of buying your, the next cup of coffee, you should invest in my Patreon. And then not only will you join our Discord server, but also you'll get access to the source code of this video and every other video on this channel. Enough self-promotion, now back to the video. Now, currently the application is still pretty small and it makes sense that we'll divide it or split up the registration by concern. So we have the services, we have the persistence, and this makes sense because each one of these composes the logic that has to do with that concern. So services is the application logic and persistence is the persistent logic, etc. But as this grows, we may notice that we have over here 10 different services and each one of the services has its own repository used by the service. And we may decide with time to refactor what we currently have and change this to be split by concern. So this may be add products and this will have everything that has to do with the products, which includes its set of persistence, registrations, service registrations, etc. Okay, so the division that we're currently doing is specific on the state that we're at currently, and this may change in the future if needed. Okay, the next thing that I like doing is also creating a folder over here for the request pipeline concerns. So let's create another folder over here like the dependency injection. Let's call this request pipeline. And over here, let's create the web application extensions. And similarly, this is going to be a static class where inside we're going to have all the various use swagger, etc. And all of these will be called in a similar fashion from the program CS, making sure that this doesn't become too cluttered and we'll end up having something similar to what we have over here. Now, the only thing that we currently have is we're initializing the database and this actually doesn't have 
to be extracted to there because it's not really an extension method on the application. But so we have something plus it's a bit more organized. I want us to be able to say app dot initialize database and have the logic encapsulated inside this method. So let's go to the file that we just created. And over here, let's go ahead and say public static web application. And let's call this initialize database. And let's have this an extension method on the web application. Now that we have this, then we can go ahead and include the namespace and put the logic over here. So what we want to do is to use the DB initializer, call initialize and finally return the app back to the caller. The last thing I would also do over here is I would take the connection string, the path to the connection string, and I would move it to persistence database. Over here, I would create something like DB constants, and this would equal to this string. And then instead of using that string from over there, we'll use the path from our constants. So overall, what we have are the following two files where the configurations for the dependency injection will sit in the service collection extensions and the various configurations for the request pipeline will sit in the web application extensions. Now in our case, this didn't make much of a difference because our application was pretty small in the first place, but as the project grows and we have more and more concerns, then this will make a huge difference in how easy it is to onboard to our product and understand what's going on. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new in the next video. Then we'll finally be adding Dapper to our application and we'll be working against the database instead of working against an in-memory static list of objects. So if that sounds interesting, make sure to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button also, why not? And I'll see you there.